I asked Chuck to get it from him. So, She's saying you don't have to be very down. This is just Chuck's email to her. That's just your email to Jeanette. So just, this goes with that. Oh. Paragraph. All right, where's my Dropbox? Okay. okay. Everybody ready? Yep. You're okay. Yeah. Let's see you got your thing on. Call of meeting Wednesday, August 17th, it's to order at 7 o'clock. Roll call. Erica Parton. Sean Harley. Randy Sneed. Derek Jones. Lisa Mulaney. George Knoll and Angela Resendez will not be here tonight. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes from August 6, 2022, regular session. Yes, August 3rd, I'm sorry. Oh, I Yeah, I read it. I just can't find it today. Do we have a motion? Well, I'll second. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes from August 3rd, 2022, regular session. Any further comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then it's passed. Citizens input. Go ahead, Paul. Well, uh, today was trash pickup day, was it not? My yes, trash yes. was not picked up today, and just about everybody in my neighborhood was not picked up today. It was also large item cleanup, so they probably didn't get to the whole town. They'll get it tomorrow. You usually like get a reach alert or something on your Facebook or I did not get anything saying they didn't finish, but the last two times that we've had large item pickups, that's what's happened. So I assume that they didn't get through the whole town today. Okay. But if they don't pick it up by tomorrow, please let me know. Yeah. I will definitely. definitely let you know. My can is full and, yeah, and I have several know. overflowing oh. neighborhood cans. I, I so. get it. I, I can't force them to do I know. it. So, you but know, I mean, we're back to... I need to see Derek shaking his head. I will tell you, I use this same waste disposal company at work. We're trying to get out of that contract because they're not upholding up there. And that's a commercial entity. Yeah. They're not upholding their deal down here. Why are we dealing with these people still? This is the third time for my own personal residence. Yeah. Okay. I sat with recycling can full for a month because he skipped the whole half a month of recycling. I still paid a full bill. I get it. Okay. I'm just saying, and I know Mr. Jones is working on this on behalf of the town, but this is getting ridiculous, people. Well, you're not wrong. Um, I think it was, I want to say May of this year that we sent a letter um, to Republic, um, kind of, and it kind of outlined, and Lisa had done a good job of like, every time there was a complaint that was called in, they noted that, and we sent them the list of that those complaints. Um, I know that she's had meetings with them and I've seen stuff in the paper uh, in the Plymouth Pilot about other municipalities having the same problems. I'm not saying that's an excuse but I'm saying that I, I think the, the council is aware that like the service is not the greatest and we have to consider though or these folks have to consider other options and if those are uh, a new trash service so be it and but i understand i don't live here but i 
I understand it's a, it's a long process to get this straightened out, but it seems like the last six months with this company has just been unreasonable. So the last and I know it's not Derek's job, it's the council's and to take care of this, but the uh, last meeting that I had with the uh, his name is James Mitros. He is like the regional director. He said that they had um, transferred out the guy that was running Culver um, to a different position and they had a new guy that was going to be running Culver and that he was going to to bear with them. There was going to be a couple of weeks of changeover but that they were adjusting this new manager into and we should see an improvement. Now if we don't see an improvement then Derek will look at the contract and then the council will vote to you know, get out of that contract and then we'll go through a bidding process. And that's what will happen. So, but uh, there's also not a lot of companies out there. So, I don't want to go picking up trash. That's not... <laughs> you know? Paul, Paul you're, not, you're not alone. I have also brought it to attention here. I have pictures and notes in my phone of my unhappiness with the trash company myself. Um, I just... Uh, Read the other night. La Paz is having the same issues. Uh, Urban's having issues. I've seen it. Plymouth's having issues. They've all had meetings with them, discussed it. They've all promised them they're going to do better. Well, they're still having problems. Matter of fact, La, La Paz said, you know, they already said, well, the service might get better, but we're still bidding it out this year. So the problem was, is we went into a contract with them based on what we, and we just have not gotten that contract what it's supposed to be out of them. It's not been good, but we are in a contract, so we have to follow that until we have a way to get out of it the right way. I understand. Way. The big thing, Paul, is they don't have a lot of competition doing the, with the kind of equipment and stuff that they have. There are some other people picking up in the countries and dip, but they couldn't handle the town. And, you know, uh, with no competition, they don't have anybody to kind of force them to do better. Yeah, they. I see they make a lot of messes. I've seen they're breaking cans. They're just. I've seen cans. They they drop them. You know, they there's a lot of problems. So don't ever feel alone. I, I understand yeah. there's problems, and they're having this problem with even their commercial customers. Yeah. Like so I said. anyhow, we'll we'll do all that we, so that we can. To it's not just the residential stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. But okay now. My neighbor's going to wonder what to do with their trash cans. I didn't receive any guidance from the town. I'm not blaming Lisa. She didn't know about it. My point is, well, we've had this problem. So what we usually rely on, Paul, is they will, if they can't get everything picked up, they normally notify Lisa. Yeah, and Lisa sends an alert out. That's what happened last month or the month right. before. Lisa There's sent an alert. No, I'm not blaming Lisa. I'm just saying. So obviously, they these did people not don't know what to do. They didn't communicate to us so we could send the notice out. To right. everybody, Wait and that's where we're at. Wait, Pam. Uh, they didn't pick mine up either. They picked up the recycle. They didn't pick up the trash. So I called, you know, and she said, if you don't, if they don't pick it up by three thirty, give us another call. I called again, and lo and behold, it's gone. Yeah, I, yeah. No, so, they I mean, I always call. Well, I did not tell them anything today, so we didn't call it in. Well, she know. said she would text. Them. <clears throat> right, but I mean, so I mean, yeah, but I have nothing from them. I don't think they used a garbage truck. I would have heard it. I think somebody did it with a pickup truck or something because, you know, but it was gone. And I've done that before, too, because they, they picked up at Lynn's house and just went right on by mine. <laughs> so I called in and, they, you know, they came around and got it. So I think you have to notify somebody. Last but, thing I'll say, and again, this has been an ongoing concern. Um, there's a point where you can declare a termination of the contract, and then if you do that, okay, that's what we've done. But then you have to consider, what does the town do? Yeah. And so that is a practical consideration that it will take a fair amount of time to find another service provider to do that. And I understand the town's not happy. We've heard numerous complaints, and again, Lisa had a list that was like, Right. That long on a piece is. of eight and a half by eleven paper. Um, we terminate the contract. We've done that, and now what? And so, 
those are those are factors in making that determination. The good news is, is that they did pass a state law where you don't have to bid it out. You have to just get three quotes. You know what I mean? They started July 1st. All the same. It doesn't really so, change yeah. the vote that we're in. I mean, yeah. the, they're just... <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I called in a couple days back to um, complain about the vulgarity of flags and signage that's hanging throughout the town. Um, the clerk uh, told me that you guys couldn't really do anything because of freedom of speech, and she is right, kind of, um, because you're government, and government can't necessarily dictate what <coughs> citizens say. So I'm coming in because I'm a citizen, not government, and and voicing my uh, opinion that that this should be looked at a little better because vulgarity is not covered under First Amendment rights. And I, I hearken this back to a case I remember hearing. This this officer of the law was kayaking on vacation, apparently having a horrible day of it. Anyways, it led him to release a bunch of vulgarities on the river. A mother and her children were downstream and could hear this. Well, it, she prosecuted and it, it went on up the chain to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, no, he can't do that, that she, her rights, their rights were violated because of his swearing. And that, that, and that vulgarity is not covered <coughs> under First Amendment rights. Um, so with that, um, it led me to Obviously, knowing that led me to call the clerk to find out if there's something I could do to have these signs change. Um, you know, I, and, and the other thing is too, I don't like the fact that when we have people coming into town seeing extremely coarse language just hanging on people's flagpoles and signage and windows, and it's just not a good look. Your name, sir? Gary Chu. Gary Chu. Chu? Yeah. How do you spell that last name? S-C-H-U-E. Okay. Can I tackle this? Would you please? Okay. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Start by saying that um, I appreciate what you're saying. I have four kids. Uh, they're from 10 to 17 years old, and it's not just Argus, but it's throughout the community. Uh, you drive by that sign, and my first thing is, I, they just don't see the sun. Um, we've never discussed it, but I appreciate your concern. Um, I, I knew that there was going to be an issue this evening about um, this, this fact or this matter, and I did 15, 20 minutes of, of looking, uh, talk to the county plan director, and what I can tell you from, again, very, very limited research, and you got to remember that the council has to direct me to do anything one way or the other, um, but my research kind of indicates that it's, you know, that vulgarity is something, especially in political speech, that can be permitted, and the, the case that you cite, I, just out of curiosity, I'd, I'd like to see that case and know what that was about. Um, but there have been several cases that have gone to the United States Supreme Court. Um, there's not really a, a clear, definitive, bright line about exactly what is and is not permitted. Um, that's the one takeaway that I that I had from this. Um, <clears throat> but I again share your sentiment that I just don't appreciate seeing that. Regardless. There is that First Amendment protection about um, I can I can say what I want so long and, and especially political speech is especially protected and that's really what you have I think in terms of what you're complaining about when you see signs that say some expletive to a political leader um, those are the ones that are probably going to be the most upheld in terms of a person's right to express what they believe or what they feel. However, <coughs> There is also a competing interest in terms of what we would call a nuisance action. 
the town does those from time to time, and that's something that's basically it's it's offensive to either your vision, your hearing, um, smell. That could be a nuisance action as well. Um, and so you, you have on one hand what we would call that nuisance action, and on the other hand you have what's called this protection of free speech. And most of the things that I've seen so far, the free speech trumps the nuisance actions. And um, I think it was back in the spring of this year, a lady in Goshen had some signs in her yard that were F this, F that, and I really don't even remember who they were directed at, but the, the, the city or the town of Goshen took that up. And I don't know where that's at, but that's not even what we would call precedent, which means regardless of how that turns out, it's not really binding on the town of Argus or Plymouth or anybody else. But it, it, it is interesting that one town decided, yeah, okay, we're not gonna tolerate this. Um, and I think for a lot of the reasons that you would, you would talk about. But in terms of what we would call the law, in terms of a statute, or in terms of uh, precedence from another case, it's lacking on that, in terms of specifically what is permissible, what is not. And I can tell you that in terms of what the town can do, we can prohibit or regulate signs or flags or any kind of expressions in terms of like the location of them, in terms of you're too close to the road, or the size of them, you know, you got a 40 foot by 30 foot billboard. We can do that, but when it comes to content, in terms of what is it that the sign says, that's where a lot of times it's a town or a public citizen, they run into trouble in terms of trying to prohibit or regulate that because it is that, again, freedom of expression. The other thing I can tell you is that there is this nuisance action that I talked about, and that is something that's open and available to everyone. It's not just something that the town would have to take up or undertake. Um, that's something that if it's, if it's your neighbor, or if it's just something that you drive by on the road every day on your way to work, or you've got kids in your vehicle, you can address that. And you can take that to court, and to be honest with you, I, I do wish you luck, and I mean that sincerely, okay? Um, but that's something that I don't know where you're going to land. I don't know where you're going to wind up with that. But I, I appreciate your concern. To jump into the weeds a little bit deeper on that, um, I, I completely understand and I'm on board with the political speech of things and somebody using vulgarity to, you know, their disdain for whoever's in office and things like that. Um, but with that being said, The one sign that, that is up, it's down by my house, I live over on South Grove, and it's over there by the grain elevator. The the signage that's that's hanging there is provocative and it, it it promotes a reaction. It's not just cursing. The sign the, the flag um, states obviously they're supporting an individual who used to be president. And, but then it follows up with um, blank your feelings. So that is, to me, that is directed at wanting a reaction. It's not, you know, like the other gentleman or the other family that has this flag over here just says blank bite. I, I get that. You know, it's, it's directed at a sitting president. Right. You know, they have that right, although he's not running right now, so is it actually political? I mean, he is a sitting president, but he's not running, he's not it campaigning. Is. So no, it definitely is. So there's that, but with this other flag, you know, it's, 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 the terminology that they're using in that flag is wanting a reaction by saying that, by, by if I was to walk up to anybody on the street that was having whatever issues, and I was just, you know, uncaring. Um, I guess maybe it touches a bit of a core because of the disability, and if somebody walked up to me and started making fun of my disability just because I'm disabled, they're, they're doing that to try to get a reaction out of me, more than likely. I don't know that that's going to be a measuring stick in yeah. terms of what is or is not permissible. And, and I, again, I understand where you're coming from, um, I, and I would again tell you that 
It's up to the council what, if anything, that they want to do with any of those signs, flags, what have you. Um, but I will tell you that it's, from what I've seen, kind of a, um, not a overly successful endeavor in terms of towns or anybody to try to prohibit those things. But again, as a private citizen, you are entitled to do that. And I can give you the Indiana Code sites if you would like. I can find them. Okay. But it's, I'm an ex law enforcement, so I. And it's again something that it's like I, I appreciate and share your concern, but I, I don't know that it's something that the town that would be something that they could potentially be involved in a, a long, expensive litigation project. And is that what they want to undertake? Now it's up to the council, not me, to decide. Yeah, that's. That's where I ran into the same um, literature um, as a government entity. Um, it really gets dicey when it becomes government on an individual, you know, limiting rights and things like that. It is, it's just not a good idea. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm coming as a private citizen um, asking for something to be done because of the, you know, the offensiveness of it. And I would um, tell you, as a private citizen, so, I'd be very interested to see how that shakes yeah. out if you decide to pursue that. Well, this is step one, obviously. Yep. I have to start somewhere. Yep. So. Yes, Kevin. As a uh, town, I think the first thing that I would look at is to see where the signs are placed and if they're actually on private property or not. If they're in the public right-of-way, we can remove those immediately. <laughs> What I saw today that said something about Trump, um, whatever, it appeared to me that they were in the right of way. Now I had other things to do so I didn't come back and check where that's at, but we have, we have the road and then we have extension that is the right of way that belongs to the town. The terrace, <coughs> the terrace on each side of the street. The exact road. location of this is what? Right across from the grain elevator is the one that I am. Now, when you say right across, it's, it's uh, uh, directly across from to the west. To the so it's yeah, directly to the west of the grain Lincoln, elevator, just on where the concrete street, pad is. Lincoln and South. Yeah, right next to the uh, uh, there's a storage barn there that's been up for sale. It's the house is right okay. next to. It. Right on the corner. No, the other way. So just to the north of the long white storage. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll drive by there tonight, take a okay. picture of see where it's at. Yeah. And again, size, location, those are things regardless of content, regardless of what the sign says, can be regulated by the town. But if that person takes the sign ten feet back and puts it on the right. property. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that's accomplishing your objective and I understand again. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I gotta start somewhere. So yeah, it's just yeah. like Good. Chuck said, you know, if it's in the right of way, we can pull it out right now. But there's nothing saying he can't put it right back in yeah. off the right of way. Yeah, hang it on his porch if he wants to. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so there's one down here hanging on on I mean it doesn't say it like that. It just has yeah. former president's uh, thing name on it. But it's not involved with anything. I mean, and, yeah, and that's why I talked to the clerk about it. It's like if they want to put that gentleman's name all over the property, then that's what they can do. That there's no issue there at all. I personally, <coughs> all my years, can't remember seeing this kind of stuff carry on after an election so long and all. I just can't. I don't. I don't get it. It's ridiculous. But that's me. That's, that's, we will check it out, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'll go by and take a picture of it and send it to the lawyer and to everybody. Anything else? Or is that pretty much? Mm, no. Um, probably talk to the council after the meeting. Though. About what? Uh, well, I guess no need now, but um, <laughs> since you're just going to drag it out of me, um, I am looking at replacing Angie's spot. It's not a thing yet, but. Um, I guess she's going to be resigning. The council has nothing to do with that. Right. We have to see uh, Shiloh. 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 No, right. he's, he's just letting you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, okay. Just yeah. a friendly. Yeah, I, I haven't talked to Shiloh lately, so I can't tell you. 
I don't know that Angie has notified her yet, but you know, like I said. Well, that's yeah. I didn't want to put the yep. cart in front of the horse. Yep. Uh, I talked with Shiloh, and <coughs> yeah, she's like, as long as there's nobody else that's going to oppose that, right? Then there's not going to be an issue. So, but we'll kind of cross our eyes and or cross our T's about our eyes this Saturday at the meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I had planned to go to that meeting this time. I don't hit all of them, but we have to move my son back to college, so I'm not going to be there. That's what I'm doing, Terry, too. I'm not supposed to be there for Yeah, we're going to be going all weekend moving him back to college. Well, so. we take notes. Yeah. I don't make very many of them because my job, I'm usually busy, and I was actually going to go to this one, and then when I seen what the date was, and I was like, oh, man. Yeah. All right. Pam, do you have anything? Mm -hmm. No. Anyone else? Any other citizen input? If not, uh, move on to attorney report. A um, couple things. Uh, just to let the council know, uh, we're working on basically an issue with the railroad track crossing there at West Street with Jamie. Um, the ball's in my court, and there's a lot of balls in my court right now in terms of things to do for the town. Um, but that's something that we're working on in terms of getting that closed, but also it's an agreement to basically have them do some other work on other crossings. Um, also, Deerfield, um, it's really, I think that that did get recorded? No. The park board meeting meets tomorrow night, and no, then... No, Deerfield, Deerfield will be oh, relevant. No, I did not record it because I'm waiting for... Um, I, I was just going to drop them both off at okay. the same time. and that's fine. You told but me to give them a review, right? That whole process is moving forward just because I know the council is interested okay. in the development of that. And Mark's kind of chewing on my butt about let's go with some stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to chat with him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Other two things that we do want to take a look at are I'll start with an easier one. I think first is the McGowan property at 711 North Michigan. We sent him a letter uh, back on July the 12th, and they're basically stuff sitting around, junk, trash, etc. cetera. Um, that 30 days that we provided for him in that letter has come and gone. And I think in talking with Chuck that things are okay or acceptable at this point. There's a little concern that maybe things it's will change in the next back 30 or 60 days because it kind of just comes and goes. Right. But that's right at now. At this point. Well, he moved, every, he moved all his stuff out and he's out working. But yeah, like you, I saw it's, it's straightened up. But I, I Why do we do? Well, the, we hope that, and we hope that because of the fact that it caught the town's attention, we sent a letter that he would understand. That, like, okay, that's not acceptable. <coughs> right. And hopefully, we won't see it again. Maybe that won't be the case, but just it's one of those time will tell. But as for now, I don't think okay. there's anything more we do with this other than just close it. Does the town? Does the town have any recourse? You know, like. I guess the question is, is you know, we hit this as a, as a one-time like kind of instance, and we, you know, and we have the same recurring. I mean, and it takes so much to go through all these processes. I mean, is there anything we can to where we don't have to go through all the? I mean, we just get right after him if that gets back in that shape again, or do we have to start all over from step one again? We do, and, and you always have to think about this from the perspective of a judge. Oh, but okay, listen. Okay, you always have to think about this from the perspective of a judge that would hear what's going on. We can talk about, like, this was the fifth time that we sent letters and things don't happen. But at the end of the day, if there's compliance based on a letter, that's what the town's after is yeah. compliance. And if it ever does come in front of a court, yes, we can talk about those things. But it's really not relevant. The judge wants to know right now what's the problem, what's not been corrected or fixed. So I understand it's aggravating to keep coming back, but. Uh, in terms of any other recourse or no, I mean, just, uh, yeah, I just I'm just curious. Are, it just seems like a huge waste of. There are fines and tickets that can be issued, and we can pursue those as well. But short of that, I mean, it's yeah, keep Thank it clean, you. take care of it. Um, if you don't, you'll hear from us again. Thank you, Jerry. Sure. The other one is the Beers property at 110 Logan Street, and. I think Chuck provided a little bit of update here. I know that Sean maybe went out and took some pictures. Corey actually, and Corey and I both went as and okay. I sent those pictures to the council and you this week. Okay. Um, my 
perspective of it is, is it's 100% better than it was. He's mowing the yard at least. He maybe done a little cleaning up. But there is still some definite concerns there. And I talked to Chuck a little bit before the meeting tonight, uh, just one-on-one. -on -one. one of my concerns was is there's some young sapling maples and some other deciduous trees growing up really close to the foundation to where it's actually a building issue, I would say. And Chuck agreed with me. I think there's a lot of trimming of brush that needs to go on on this property yet. The fence line that surrounds the property is all grown up in Jimson weed. There's still quite a bit of vegetative type work to clean up there on that property before I would say, you know, I wouldn't want to live next to it. That's me. So, and you got to, again, this is where I'm going to say I've seen the pictures, okay? And in terms of do you want to stand in front of a judge and you will be my witness from the town if this is the position, but to say that that is not acceptable yeah, in I terms of vegetation or nuisance and things of that nature. And it's kind of one of those things I think we kind of need to focus on the worst of the worst. And if there's, and you said 100, I don't know if there's 100 <coughs> compliance, but what we sent a letter about was a roof, I believe. That is done. That's done, that's taken care of. Um, I don't think it's it's bad or out of line to just say, hey, you know, there's some other things here in terms of vegetation that maybe you need to address. But if again, there has been compliance when the town has reached out to Mr. Beers or the Beers family. Um, so I would certainly hope that you still go down that road and do things. I think in that that's fashion. kind and of what we discussed tonight. Maybe Chuck and Corey possibly together approach him and some of our concerns kind of still there keep possibly. in the back of your mind but like at, at some point if you do stand in front of a judge you don't want a judge saying you know the town's crying wolf that isn't that big of a deal and we don't want to set that kind of a precedent because we do a fair amount of these cases in court yeah. that are like, no, I, I get like it. those need attention I just you know we had a neighbor sitting in here and I looked down that property yeah. line, and I wouldn't want to be his neighbor I hear you but again if that neighbor yeah. thinks that that's that bad he has that option as well, just like we explained to Mr. Yeah. Hughes. You take it up and you file your, your nuisance action and see where you go with it. Good and if, yeah, any 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 person can do that. So so that's what I had to report. Okay. I make a motion to accept the attorney report. Did. Uh, Chuck, have anything you want to add on these others with Derek right now? No, I'll wait till my time then. Okay. I'll second your motion then. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second to accept attorney report. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> report. It passed. Other old business. You want to come in here or you want to go to a new business? No, he's got it on planning director down below. Oh, way down there. Okay. And way down there. Is there any other new business that it needs to be brought up? No? Any? Department head reports. Please. So all I have what I have is in my report. In my report reference the code enforcement violation. <clears throat> that wasn't taken care of as of today, so I just sent a certified ticket in the mail. So you wrote, uh, and I think his name, Phil, Phil Llewellyn, a ticket for that tall yes. grass, and they came back and said it would be cut Monday. No, I talked. I gave him a warning. Okay. Then I talked to him, and he said he didn't have to do it. Uh, he would take it to court. Then he called me back and said it would be done Monday. Right. And it wasn't as of today. It's not been done yet. Done. So why are we doing and I that? think he's also been in talk to Lisa, his son, who's all bent out of shape. We had Matt Llewellyn come in and tell me that it was zoned ag, and that he did not have to, he showed me where he's paying ag taxes on it, and that he didn't have to follow those guidelines because it's ag property, but that is not true. If you look at our zoning map, it is zoned business too. This so, one's not zoned ag. What he's done is got the assessor to assess it as ag. Yeah. Okay. So of, it's zone B2. So he's paying cheap taxes on yes. what it should be. He was able to, and I don't know how, because it's not zoned ag. 
Well, maybe somebody needs to uh, make the assessor aware. Well, regardless of zoning, what are we trying to enforce here? It's oh, in the lot. Okay, address. under an ordinance or under yeah. the development code? Code enforcement. Yeah. Code enforcement. It hasn't been mowed in a while. No, there's a little scrub tree going. Under a Town of Argus Code of Ordinances yes, or yes. under the zoning the ordinance? Coordinate. Code of Ordinances. Okay. So is it within the corporate limits? Yes. Okay. Then, yeah, that's fine. And the, the, I believe the code says you can't have it more than eight inches. So that is where like that. we're at. I think it's six, but is it six or eight? It's 50 oh, inches. Eight, 50 that inches. Kind of it is. This is all feet. Well, what I'm hearing now, I, Corey, Corey didn't do anything wrong there. I mean, right. Because we're going to use a little lot. So what? We, you, you don't do anything right don't now. Don't do anything? Corey's doing his job, let him do it. Okay. Do we do the same thing with the Burger King property? Yeah, we did. The Burger King property, we had an agreement with Tom Obermeyer. He had come to a council meeting a while back and said that he would not let it grow more than eight inches. If it is more than eight inches, Corey knows that he has the authority to do As a matter of fact, I sent them a ticket this year and then it got moved. Yeah. So, I mean, we were following the rules, so we didn't bet nothing for anybody. Yeah. yeah. That's all you have then? Oh, I have Utilities, Jamie? Um, I just want to talk to you about this grain tile. There was a meeting Monday at the county, and we discussed this. It's probably been a month ago or so. Um, building our buildings, it was going to be a problem on setbacks with this tile. So what we did is we, we agreed to take that tile over from um, the east part of that to First Street. And that's what they agreed to. Well, they looked at more of that tile, and they want to give us the tile from First Street to West Street. It actually runs under our building. Um, there was no permit. There was nothing done when this building was built with it. So, so they don't want. I mean, if it ever broke, whatever, they don't want to be responsible for it. So. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't have it on this map, but the one I gave you before, there's a tile that runs along First Street that this 20-inch tile runs into towards um, Walnut Street. So there's very little, if anything, that runs under the building through that tile. So we can contest that if we want to, but I think we just let it go. I don't think it's something for us to really be concerned about. It really, it's, it's probably mostly a dead tile anyway. We even dammed it up halfway, so it's a 20 inch tile. We, we poured concrete in it probably when we built this building and, and dammed it up six, eight, ten inches in there. So, you know, if you get a big flow of water, some might go through there. For the most part, it all gets redirected through the bigger tile. So, you know, Lisa probably hasn't got the letter yet, but there will be a letter coming on this for the next meeting if we want to contest it. But, like I said, I, I don't think it's a problem. I think we just let it go. Um, it, does, it handles what we want. It to do so that we can you know build those buildings like what we plan the other thing is on that that 20 inch tile that runs in that alley to first street that's all just been upgraded this last year right. so we, we should be good for a long time so i just want to give you an update on where we're at that's, that's that. a piece that you worked with the county on fixing Correct. when we yep. got, when we started uh, yep. working in there anyway. yeah it went we put taps in there and everything, so when we build this building, we're going to put the gutter straight into it and all that stuff. So it being ours, we can just do it. So, I, like I said, I don't see it being a problem at all. Um, yeah. Nothing to worry about. Do, uh, do we need a motion or anything to accept that, to accept uh, I, taking that over? It's not, our, it's not our tile. They're doing it. Okay. It's all, I mean, they're handling it. If we want to contest it, we need to go to that meeting. Nice. But if... If we're okay with it, which I I recommend we take it. I mean, it's it's not gonna be a problem, and we just let it happen. Yeah, I, I've attempted. It to sounds like we'll see something down the way a little bit from the county to vacate that. In in it may. Yeah. Yeah. Would be my guess. Okay. Okay. Um, everything else is going good. You probably seen uh, B and B was here. They started the EMS expansion. Um, they came in and hauled a lot of.
flat and high ground out. They're getting ready to go. We're still waiting on them to go to move that gas line. So that's kind of been the holdup on this whole project up to this point. So we've had a date that they're going to come move it a couple times, and it comes and goes. And B and B staying on them pretty good to get that done. I, I guess there's a plan they should come in the next week to do it, but we'll, we'll see. I won't believe it until I see it. Jamie, I have a question. Um, a, a couple of meetings ago, we, we discussed that over there where the buildings are going to come together mm -hmm. on that roof tie-in, and we I think we kind of left it that maybe you was going to investigate what it would take to just bring that together right with a peak roof instead of that flat roof where we have to replace it all the time. Have you looked into that at all? I don't have the you? numbers on it. We've discussed it, but I don't I don't have the numbers on okay. it. I just was curious if you had any chance. Yeah, to I think what we decided, and we'll do half of it, the question is do we do the whole thing? So, uh, I'll yeah. get your price on it. Well, I, I just know the problem with that roof's been in the past. Yeah. You know, do, tie, if we have to tie into it, there's, that, that's just my opinion. So, yeah, I, just curious. Yeah, it's probably the time to do it. And, and I think we fixed the issues we had with that building, the reason we put the rubber roof on, so it's probably the time to do it. Other than that, the only other thing I have is Deerfield's moving along pretty good. We've got a house going up out there. Um, we're working on a little bit of the storm tile. Once we're done with that, we should be done with phase one on that. I'll be coming around putting electric in. So we're working on that. I've got everything on order, so when that comes in, we'll probably get started. But again, everything's going good out there. We've got some stone down there. It's starting to, starting to look like something. Yep. We'll see if any other questions. No, nope. I mean, we'll get the report. Yeah. Economic director. You got it? <clears throat> I got it. Uh, I got it. The only thing that he didn't mention, we're trying to get a, and this isn't final, we're trying to get a walkthrough with the architect and the engineering firm for the downtown square. So they wanted to walk through with the contractor. Uh, now one thing we'll have, and I told you that before, all of you, if you see something you don't like, make a note, because we will have a final walkthrough with the grant administrator, the contractor, and the engineering firm. So I don't know, they didn't say much more than that, just walk through. So if there's something you don't like and you've seen it, I guess let Jamie and I know before we go to that. Uh, but probably they still got paving supposed to be this next week. I think some of that uh, kind of relies on when they come to pay for us. They'll be the final. coming, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what their deadline is. Uh, the guy we've we've got some more paving. paving to do, so I don't know if they'll incorporate with that, but we're, and that's what it we're probably like. a month, six weeks out before we're ready for that. So I don't know if they'll try to get in here and get that done before that. Hopefully, but they've got the rest. They did the rest of the concrete this week. Fixed that drainage issue. Yeah, yeah. Everything's coming along. Uh, those concrete rocks are leaving. That's not what I think was thought. So they're going back. So I, I think those were intended for sitting, and they're not. I wouldn't sit on them even if I had work clothes on. So we'll come up with, and I thought we had to decide that in the meeting. We'll come up with some type of seating to put down there. I thought we had that one. We thing never with a bunch of benches. Lines. Well, there are benches down. There's benches okay. on the outside. He had put these around the trees. I think thought people would sit on them, but that's not not inside there. They had thirty of them. Well, I don't know where they were going to stick them all because. <laughs> but we looked at some seating areas today, and we'll come up with something and show it to you. And for what those cost, we got almost a thirty thirty one thousand dollar credit. So we'll be able to find lots of seating for $31,000. I have only one, only one concern that I have up there, and I'd like to see the progress that's going on, but the, the trees that they put in there in that in that seating triangle, I'm going to call it that seating triangle, mm -hmm. uh, I just, the trees they put in there didn't have a very big leaf surface, and they won't have, as, even as they mature, I just expected there to be trees that would possibly give a little bit more shade there than what those will, or I guess I wouldn't have thought about it so much if they'd have done a mixture of trees in there. They put the all same type in that one area. Yeah, and I'm not sure yet. That's one thing on the list when he comes. I think he's coming tomorrow. Oh, he's, I, 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 I don't know. When we get with the art, because that was one question. They all those trees have irrigation, but as you can tell, two out of the 
15 are already dying. So that was one of my already complaints. So I can't tell you on the size what they're what they're the I'm not the tree man, so I well, I'm sorry, I just, no. I just no, I meant what kind are even there. I'm sure they picked yeah. something that doesn't root as deep as you think just because of where it is, but I'm sure it should go deeper than what. I, because right now, I mean, when you see renderings, that doesn't quite meet the picture, I agree. So. I just expected uh, something with a little better shade, uh, possibly. You know, people can enjoy it in the summer. It's going to be hot right there. And I'm you know, not sure how fast those will grow. I'm not, but, but even as, like I said, even as that particular tree matures, it doesn't have a big leaf surface. Yeah. Well, depending on the time of the day, the sprinklers will come on and keep you cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the input. I mean, it's just great help. <laughs> Our second splashback. Yeah. There we go. Is that it? That's all I've got today. All right. Plan director. Um, I gave you my list of the property updates. Um, 193 South Michigan, which is next to downtown, uh, the porch has been repaired, the new header posts and fascia have been installed there, that's uh, taken care of. 413 Southwest Street, Argus Enterprises, the building that had been fallen and was in a pile, it's been removed, taken out of there, uh, taken care of, and the trash has been moved. Uh, 110 South Logan Street, Barney Beers, new roof has been applied, fascia drip edge has been replaced on the whole building. Um, and then 220 North Urich, uh, Edward Lytle, addition attached to the front of the house, no permits, no inspections. Um, 304 East Plum Street, Virgin Villa, we sent a letter on May 8th giving her 30 days to complete and take care of everything. Uh, it's been over a hundred days at this time. So my recommendations are 193 South Michigan Streets in compliance. We're going to take it off of our list. Uh, 413 Southwest Street in compliance. We do remove that from our list. 110 Logan Street Barney Beers. What he took care of the roof and the structure and all that I asked him to. There's discussion here about. Um, still needing to be cleaned up, trimmed up. What my recommendation would be is that we have code enforcement work with him. Um, he, he's made a lot of progress there. And I think he just needs somebody to help him know what he should be doing with the rest of it. I, I think it's just kind of not knowing. Um, and I would be happy to work with code enforcement to go down there and talk with him about that. But, uh, as far as being in compliance with the the house, uh, we're taking it off our list. 220 Yurick Street, um, that started under construction without a permit. We let him know they didn't have a permit, so he applied on July the 1st for a permit. He has not been issued a building permit because it's not within the setbacks. It's too close to the road. So right now, what he did was um, completed it without a without a permit, without any inspections, and it's in the wrong location. Um, my recommendation for that is a letter from the attorney telling him that he needs to remove that from the house. There are other places he can add on to his house if that's what he wants to do and still be in compliance, but right where that's at, unless he were to approach the BZA and get a variance of a uh, variance of setback standards, um, which is a possibility. Probably would not be my recommendation to the BZA to do that, but um, he could apply that way. But I think we need to um, kickstart this and get it going and get it in the right direction. And then uh, 304 East Plum Street. Um, I've gone to the um, head of the uh, Indiana Association of Building Officials, talked to them about trailers. A trailer can't be modified, rebuilt, or anything done like that unless it goes back to the factory. 
there are no standards that we have in the building industry to regulate that. They're, if you look inside the windows, they've taken everything out from the inside. They're putting walls up. They're changing windows. There's still plywood around some of the windows and around the trailer. My recommendation is that um, have a letter from the attorney and remove the trailer. We have case law that says that um, that's Kohler versus the city of South Bend talking about when something has not been done, although it could be repairable or fixed and hasn't been done over a long time, that we can still ask for it to be removed. It would be my recommendation that we get rid of that trailer. The rest of the property is in decent shape. She could bring something back in if she wanted to, but this just isn't worth it and worth fixing. So that's all I've got. I'll make a motion to accept Chuck's recommendations, um, singling out 220 Yerrick Avenue, authorizing the attorney to send a letter to the property owner to remove the porch that was put up uh, illegally without the proper permits and a letter to from the attorney to the owners of three or four east plum street to remove the trailer that is not allowed to be repaired or anything on site Can you second that? sorry Go ahead. no it's okay to keep your second in that discussion second. so we have a motion and a second to accept chuck's uh, updates with what's in compliance and what still needs to be done um, with uh, different property ups that we're working on. Um, any further discussion, Derek? Yeah, I, I would like to get with Chuck about the 220 Yurik uh, Street place, and, and I'm happy to send a letter about that. That sounds like a clear. <laughs> shouldn't have done it that way. Um, the other thing, I want to look into that, that Virgin Avila property. I know that we sent a letter, um, and I talked to Chuck a little bit. I thought things had been remedied. Um, but again, I, I want to get with him about that um, before we just go charging forward about that. I think on that, and, it, and you look into it, I remember making that motion to approve the repairs on the fence and right. stuff on that property. Right. But nothing on the trailer. Nothing on the trailer. And that's where I Yeah. I don't have to file. And, and you'll have to, I don't have it, but you know, okay. exactly. But I do remember making a motion to approve that the fence and stuff been fixed. I don't remember releasing the trailer. I mean, I appreciate his concerns. If, yeah. if there's still things that need to be done that haven't been done, okay, sure. let's look into that. That trailer has been junk for years. Yeah. Um, also, Lisa, on Uric Avenue, he had a way I understand, I maybe I'm going to use the wrong word, but he had a fence that didn't meet our yes. code. So, can he we put that in? He tore the fence down. He did. He tore the fence down and then he um, and boxed in his front porch right. and leaned rail up against his house so the dog had a little track to run down to the side of his house. Now he has added a whole covered porch. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's okay, yeah. it's a whole covered yeah, porch. Yeah, it's a room. And that's... It, it, it's actually a room. He's got... Furniture in there, TV. Everything. Yeah, so, I mean, so, you know, he, he knew. But the fence is back in, the fence is not in The fence is not a problem anymore. Okay. No. <laughs> and and fence it's, and it's just been, um, <laughs> and he did bring me in when he found out when, uh, I think Steve Howard paid him a visit and that he said that, hey, you don't have a building permit. He applied for that building permit. He came in here and he gave me the application. And that's all it was, was an application. Right. But he was never approved for a building permit because it didn't meet our setbacks. He was told to stop, as far as I know, and didn't. Okay. So well, he just, has had some communication on it, but um, again. Okay. All right, so. Uh, We've got the motion, we've got the second, we've had our comments, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you, sir.
I'm sorry? I said then you had those two letters. To, mm -hmm. Well, I guess you're going to talk to Chuck. Yeah, talk okay. to Chuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get with Chuck and okay. figure out a game plan on, on those guys. Claims. Lisa. Yep. I know, I get it. Okay, so the claims to, for this meeting are from August 2nd until August the 15th, and they're for $525,090.41. And this time I actually included all the ACH numbers and the EFT numbers. If I see that change, if you notice. But <laughs> it just gives you the numbers of the claims for ACH and EFTs. You always get them in your reports, but I don't think you've ever noticed the numbers on them, so I just exactly. attach them to the front sheet. I'll make a motion to approve the claims from 8-2-2022 to 8-15-2022 for a total of $525,000. And, excuse me, $525,000 thousand and ninety dollars and forty one cents. I'll second that. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to accept the claims from eight two twenty two to eight fifteen twenty two for the amount of five twenty five thousand nine dollars and forty one cents. <laughs> zero message yet zero or two. We left that out. So anyhow, any further comment? Yeah. Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Claims have passed. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Hey, I'm hungry. Please adjourn.